Hey guys, I wanted to take a look at a question that is, uh, was from one of my midterms when I was taking calculus, and it's a, a limit question, which kind of uses like a bunch of different uh, like properties that you learn about limits and evaluating limits and combines it with uh, a system of equations where you're solving for unknowns A and B, and it also throws in some uh, continuity uh, stuff in there. So let's take a look at this question. It says, determine the values of A and B which are real numbers, such that f of x, which is defined by the piecewise function below, is continuous everywhere. So, as a reminder, we know that a function is continuous if at a certain point the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists, that is, that's one that's our one condition. The second condition, we have that f of a exists. So the function is de defined at the point that we are evaluating. And then the last condition is that the limit as that function approaches that point is got to be equal to what the function is actually defined at that point. And I chose a here not to be confused with the a that's in our uh, f of x equation here that we're solving for, but a here is just a just any random point. Um, so if you look at this question, we know that the most important point is uh, when we're switching our behavior of our function. So at x, e when x is less than zero, we're defined by this uh, sine of 4x over 2x and then it switches at x equals 0 to become ax plus b. So at x equals 0, that is like a critical point where we know that like there needs to be a smooth transition from that first behavior of the function into the second behavior of the function. And then we can say the same thing about when we transition at x equals 2 from that middle behavior to the last quadratic behavior of the function. We basically need to satisfy all three of these uh, conditions for continuity. Um, and we're, so we'll try writing out some of the conditions that we know in terms and hopefully we'll be able to come up with um, a system of equations where we can solve for our values a and b. So let's take a look at the, the, first, the first condition that the limit has to exist and let's focus on uh, when x is 0 at this point. So when x is 0 we know that so the limit as x approaches 0, for the limit to exist, it has to be equal from the left side and the right side. They both have to be approaching the same value from the if we're looking at the function coming from the left and coming from the right. So if we're coming from the left, we know that the function is uh, behaving like sine of 4x over 2x. So on the right hand side, or le the, the left hand side of our equation, we can write this as the limit as x approaches zero from the left of sine of 4x over 2x. And this has got to be equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right hand side. And from the right hand side, if we're greater than zero, then we are, uh, the function is defined by ax plus b. So on this side, we're going to have ax plus b as the function. So looks like we have some, some sort of a equation that we can come up here with some unknowns. And we've got to evaluate these limits. So you'll, you'll notice that on the right hand side, we can plug in our value of x right away. And like we have no problem. We're not dividing by 0 or uh, not getting any term that like doesn't exist and it looks like we can just plug in right away so we'll have a times 0 plus b and that first term will be 0 and we're just left with b on the right hand side and now this left hand side so there's two things that you can do here and it sort of depends on uh, what your professor is saying you're allowed to do in the course and uh, you can take advantage 
of L'Hopital's rule because you can notice that it will be in the form, the indeterminate form of 0 divided by 0. And you can apply L'Hopital's rule or you can use take advantage of the, the known limit that when x is approaching 0 of sine of theta over theta, that will be equal to 1. This is a known limit and we can apply that. So let's let's use that method and we'll notice that we've got 4x and we've got a 2x so we've got to make some sort of substitution to try to get it to look like that text that we've got in red on the right hand side. So let's let's say that let's let 4x be equal to theta because that's that is what I want. So if 4x is equal to theta, then I know that 2x, I divide by 2 on both sides, 2x would be equal to theta over 2. We also know that we have to change the bounds of our limit. So if x is approaching 0, so as x is approaching 0, theta also approaches 0. And you can see that from when we let 4x equals theta. If x is approaching theta, or sorry, if x is approaching zero, we know that theta is as well because they're uh, they're proportional to each other. So we can rewrite this limit now, and let, let me move this to the side. We can now write this limit as the limit as theta approaches zero from the left of sine of, and then we said four x was theta, and two x was theta over two. So then we can take we can pull out that constant and we'll have two times the limit as x or theta sorry theta approaches zero of sine of theta over theta equals b and we know that this is a known limit which equals one so we'll have two times one equals b or two is equal to b. So this means, what does this mean exactly? This means that when b is equal to two, we know that the limit as x approaches zero from the left will be equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right. So we also need to show that that limit is gonna be equal to the function itself at the point x equals zero. But let's not worry about that for now. Let's try to find what our other, our other variable is for a. And Let's do the same thing with uh, that we the same logic that we used, but at, at now x equals two. So we have the limit as x approaches two from the left of f of x must be equal to the limit as x approaches two from the right of f of x. Let's take a look at our function, how it's defined, and when we're less than two. When our x is less than 2, our function behaves as ax plus b. So I've got the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of, and I just solved for b. I know that that's going to be 2. So we'll do ax plus 2 equals the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. And this is behaving as ax squared minus bx plus 3, or ax squared minus 2x plus 3. Great. So let's plug in our values of 2 now, because we've just got polynomials, and we can plug in our, to evaluate this limit, we can plug this in right away. So we have, let me scroll down a bit, we have uh, 2a plus 2 is equal to uh, two, 2 squared a minus 2 times 2 plus 3. So this will be equal to 2a. This will be a 4a minus 4 plus 1. So we've got 3 on this side. This uh, moving the constants over, and then we've got uh, 2a on this side, or a equals 3 over 2. Great. 
So we've solved for our values of a and b. So I know that the limit here is going to uh, have like a smooth transition at when a equals 3 over 2 and b is equal to 2. So I'm not done yet. I just need to make sure that my function is defined at that point and that the limit exists. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Okay. So first, let's look at when x equals 0. The limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, we want that to be equal to f of 0, right? OK, great. And we know from what we solved over here, we know that the limit we solved that that limit as x approaches 0 is going to be equal to 2. And we know that it's going to hold true for both sides. The limit exists and it's equal to 2. And we know f of 0. So if we take a look at the behavior, when x is 0, it's in this middle, this middle uh, domain for x. So we, we want to plug in our value of 0 for ax plus b. So it'll be a times 0 plus b. And again, we know what these values are. We've got 3 over 2 times 0 plus 2. So you can see here we've got 2 is equal to 2, which means that we pass all the conditions uh, for continuity at x equals 0. Now finally, we just need to check that at x equals 2, these same conditions are met. So the limit as x approaches 2 on f of x is equal to the function's actual value at 2. So reminder here, guys, we're taking the limit as x approaches 2 of 3 over 2x plus 2. We know that the limit's going to be equal on both sides here, right? Because we solved for a and b by using this limit equation. So I'm just solving for the limit using one of the sides. I know that they will be equal from both sides. So to evaluate it, I can just plug in values that I've solved for. So I've got that limit right there is equal to the function's value at 2. And remember, we've got x is equal to 2 um, in this last domain. So we've got ax squared minus bx plus 3. So plugging in our values, we have 3 over 2 x squared minus 2x plus 3. So plugging in our values again, for x, we have this equals 3 over 2, 2 squared, 2 times 2 plus 3. This is 3 plus 2. This will be 6 minus 4 plus 3. 5 is equal to 6 minus 4 is 2 plus 3 equals 5. And we've now shown that all three conditions are met at both of these transition points at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So therefore, for f of x to be continuous everywhere, a equals 3 over 2, b is equal to 2. And that is our final answer.